Hey guys, Nitzer, bringing you a video about the Overwatch graphical settings and uh, how you can increase your FPS and overall performance in uh, competitive play or just if you want to get better FPS because your computer can't handle the graphical settings. And I'm going to show you a few tips and also how you can test out the different uh, settings you can set in so you can get the best performance possible out of your system. Uh, so let's start off by going out of practice range and going into the graphical settings. So by starting off, you should look at the display mode. Uh, some of you probably have borderless. Uh, I'd recommend against it because it could mess with some settings we're gonna look at later. Uh, so put this as full screen if you want the most FPS. Uh, target display, doesn't really matter. Uh, pick the screen you play at, basically. The resolution should always be the one at the bottom. That is your native display. Um, actually, all of these are your native display, all the ones with the asterisks next to it. Pick the one with the most hertz, so this one in the brackets. Uh, next, field of view should always be max. Not gonna go into detail on that. It has, doesn't have anything to do with performance. Aspect ratio, 16 by nine, if your screen is 16 by nine. Uh, V-Sync and triple buffering should always be off. Uh, reduced buffering should always be on. Uh, if you want to see your FPS and ping while you're in-game, you can turn this option on, and then turn on frame rate and turn on show ping. Uh, now we're going to go into the, the limit FPS option. Some of you people have display based, some of you like to play pick custom and just boost it all the way up to 300. I actually like to have it as my native display, so 144, you can check that right here. So I like putting it to that, some of you can put it at 300 if you have a system that can go up to 300. I like having it at 144 for the most optimal for me. Uh, we're going to go into the advanced options now. Render scale should never be on automatic, you should pick it manually, and I want it on 100%. Uh, some people put on 75 to uh, lessen the input lag. You could do that if you want, but I like 100%. Texture quality should be on low. Uh, texture filtering quality should be on 16, because no matter the system, uh, this has only to do with RAM, so you can put it on whatever you want. If you want to like see if you can get more FPS out of it, sure, you can go low, but I like putting it on 16. Uh, local fog details should be on low, dynamic reflections should be off, the, the details should be on medium because sometimes it gives you an advantage in competitive, model detail low, effects low, lightning low, and then anti-aliasing you should put that off, refraction should be on low, uh, screenshot quality just doesn't really matter, I like having it on three, three times because I take screenshots sometimes, local reflections and ambient occlusion should both be off. Apply that and then restart Overwatch and I'll see you in a bit. So now that we're in Overwatch again we're gonna go into training and then practice range. This is where you should test your FPS first uh, before you actually jump into the real game. So we're gonna jump on a Genji right here and just dash out and look around and you can see my FPS up in the left corner there is around the stable 144 which I set it to. I could actually just quickly go in and put it to 300 and see how much we can get. Uh, I can go around, yeah, I can get around 300 on these settings, but not really my my style. Because um, I don't like have, I, I don't know, I, I don't like having the FPS fluctuate that much between uh, 144 and 300, because when I'm actually in-game shooting at people, the FPS is not 300, it's 300 in the practice range. I'm actually gonna show you the real technique to test your FPS because this is not a good, um, how do you say it, like barometer for FPS. This is actually not your accurate FPS or in-game FPS, it's only the practice range FPS. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to see the real FPS. So you leave the, the practice range, you go onto the arcade and then create a new game. Uh, you move yourself to the spectators and you add a bunch of hard AI. Of course, you can still be, you don't have to be in the spectators. This is only just, this is just for me when I'm testing this. So then you jump onto the modes and you turn on the skirmish. You turn off all the other modes. Uh, let's see, there we go. And then you start the game. So you could be on the team, you, you could be spectating, it doesn't really matter. So what we're actually doing now is we're testing the real FPS. Uh, 
this is what the FPS is like when I set the limit to 300. And uh, you can see it dipped down to around 200, but the combat hasn't begun yet, and that's where it's gonna dip a lot. So that's just a cool technique to test and see what your computer can handle. You can mess around the settings. And uh, one last thing before you leave, we're gonna jump out of this game and go back into the practice range. And we're gonna do something to check your sim. So we're gonna jump on McCree right here. <laughs> no reason. You can pick any hero. And then you're gonna press Control, Shift, and an N. It's gonna bring up this really weird weird screen that covers everything and what I want you to look at is the numbers in the left corner with the sim next to it I want you to look at the number in the middle the one that says 4.3 4 now 4.4 something like that and I want that number to be under 10 if you don't have it under 10 you're gonna have a lot of input lag in your game uh, this is something most uh, graphic tutorials don't cover they don't show you this they don't mention it but it's actually the most important detail, it's even more important than FPS, really. If your sim is around under 10, anything lower is just better. If you have it above, maybe slightly above 11, 12, it's, it's handleable, but I'd recommend upgrading your system to lower it. You can't really do anything with the settings, if you did as I did earlier, lowering everything. If I put it to 144, you're gonna see my sim is gonna skyrocket and then slowly go down to 7. This means the sim isn't gonna go up and down all the time. Because uh, even if you have a really low sim and it keeps skyrocketing when you're actually in combat, that's gonna ruin your aim because it's gonna go really fast and then slow down during combat sequences and you don't want that. You don't want input lag in your game. So, by following the tips I've showed you earlier, limiting your FPS to get a stable number under 10, you're gonna get the most out of your game and you're gonna get the most out of competitive. Uh, so that's all I had to show you for now. I'm probably gonna do another video showing some Windows 10 tips, how to like disable certain features so you can get more out of your system uh, without purchasing upgrades or upgrading your graphics card. So, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.